Well, let me ask you about the radical nationalism because that is a topic that comes up in the discussion of the war in Ukraine today. Uh, can you tell me about Stepan Bandera? Who was he, this controversial far-right Ukrainian revolutionary? The right list to Stepan Banderas. Uh, one is the real person, and another is mythology that uh, really comes uh, comes with this name. And uh, the real person was a young student, nationalistically oriented student in the late 1920s and early 1930s in the part of Ukraine that was controlled by Poland, who uh, belonged to the generation who regretted that they were not born in time for the big struggles of the of the um, World War One and and revolution at that time. They believed that their fathers lost opportunity for Ukraine to become independent, and that uh, a new ideology was needed. And that ideology was uh, radical nationalism, and new tactics were not needed. So. Bandera becomes the leader of the uh, organization of Ukrainian nationalists in Ukraine at the young age and organizes a number of assassinations of the Polish officials or uh, members of the Ukrainian community who this young people in their uh, 17, 18, 19 considered to be, uh, to be collaborators. He is arrested, put on trial, and that's that's where the myth of Pandera starts starts to emerge, because he uses the trial to uh, make statement about about the um, Ukrainian nationalism, radical nationalism, and its goals, and suddenly becomes becomes a hero among the and the youth Ukrainian youth at that time. He is uh, sentenced for uh, for uh, execution for death. So when he delivers his speech, he, he knows that he he probably would would die soon. And then it was the sentence was commuted to life to, to life in prison. Then World War II happens. The Polish state collapses under the the pressure coming, of course, from from uh, Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union. Uh, Bandera walks walks away and presides over the act of the split of the organization of Ukrainian nationalists into two groups. The most radical one, you used to call revolutionary, they call themselves revolutionary, is led by, by Bandera. They work together with the Nazi Germany at that time, with the hope that Nazi Germany would deliver them independent Ukraine. Uh, first days of the German attack, Nazi attack on the Soviet Union. The um, units formed on the basis of organization of Ukrainian nationalists march into the city of Lviv and declare Ukrainian independence. That was not sanctioned by the German authorities. That was not in German plans. So they arrest Bandera, members of his family, his brothers, mem members of the leaders, leaders of the organization. So his two brothers go to Auschwitz, die there. He was sent to Sachsenhausen for most du duration of the of the war until 1944, refusing to revoke declaration of Ukrainian independence, which again contributes contributes further to his mythology. After the war, he never comes back to Ukraine. He lives in exile in Munich. Uh, so between 1930 and his death uh, in 1959, he spent in Ukraine maybe uh, up to two years, maybe a little bit more, but most of the time was either in the Polish prison or in the in the German concentration camp or in exile. But the myth of Bandera lived and all the members of the organization of Ukrainian nationalists and then the Ukrainian insurgent army that fought against the Soviets all the way into the early 1950s, they were called Banderites. They were called Banderites by the Soviet authorities. They were known also in that way to the local population. So there was a faraway leader that barely was there on the, on the spot 
but whose who, whose name was attached to this to this movement for really liberation of Ukraine at that time. Again, the battle that failed. The fact that he collaborated with the Nazis sticks. From one perspective, he's considered by many to be a hero of Ukraine for fighting for the independence of Ukraine. From another perspective, uh, coupled with the fact that there's this radical revolutionary extremist flavor to the way he sees the world, that label just stays that he's a fascist, he's a Nazi. Uh, to what degree is this true? To what degree is it not? Well, uh, um, th th this label is certainly promoted by the first by the Soviet propaganda and then by Russia prop Russian propaganda. It's, it's, it works very nicely. Uh, mm, if you if you focus on the on the years of collaboration, uh, those were the same years when uh, Joseph Stalin collaborated with Hitler, right? So we, we we have we have the same the same reason to call uh, Stalin Stalin Nazi collaborator as we have uh, the reason to call Bandera Nazi collaborator. We we uh, look at the at the situation in the Pacific, in Indonesia, in other places. Uh, the leaders who worked together with uh, Japanese with the idea of promoting independence of their countries. After the Japanese collapse, become leaders of the empire. So the difference with Bandera is that he never becomes the leader, the leader of empire, and 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 immunity <laughs> that comes with that with that position certainly doesn't apply to him. But uh, uh, there are other parts of his life which certainly certainly put this whole thing in in question: the, the fate of his family, his own time in the German concentration camp. Uh, certainly don't fit don't fit the the propaganda one one sided image of Bandera. In terms of him being a hero, that's that's a very very interesting question because he is perceived in Ukraine today by not by 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 all and probably not by the majority, but by many people in Ukraine, as a symbol of fighting against against the the um, Soviet Union and by extension against Russia and Russian occupation so his popularity grew after february 24th 2022 as a symbol of that resistance again we are talking here about myth and mythology because bandera was not leading the fight against the soviet uh, the, the 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 soviet occupation in uh, in Ukraine, because at that time he was just simply not in Ukraine. He was in Germany, and you can imagine that geography mattered at that time much more than it matters today. Uh, there's a million questions to ask here. I think it's an, an important topic because it is at the center of the claimed reason that the war continues in Ukraine. And so I would like to explore that from, from different angles. But just to clarify, was there a moment where Bandera chose Nazi Germany over the Red Army when the war already began. So in the list of uh, allegiances, is Ukraine's independence more important than fighting Nazi Germany, essentially? The Ukrainian independence was the, their goal, and they were there to, to work with anybody who would, who would support and, and uh, in one way or at least allow the Ukrainian independence. So the, the, there is no question that uh, they they are just classic nationalists. So the the goal is uh, the nationalism is the principle according to which the or at least one definition is according to which the cultural boundaries coincide with political boundaries. So their goal was to create political boundaries that would coincide with the geographic boundaries in the conditions of the World War II and certainly making making deals with with whoever would would uh, 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 would either support as I said or tolerate that that project of theirs so I would love to find the line between nationalism even extreme nationalism and fascism and Nazism so for Bandera the myth and Bandera the person, to what degree, let's look at some of the ideology of Nazism. To which degree did he hate Jews? Was he anti-Semitic? Uh, we uh, know that basically in his circle, there were people who were 
anti-Semites in a sense that, okay, we have the texts, right? We know that. We don't have that that information about about uh, or that that sort of tax or that sort of evidence with regard to to Bandera himself. Um, uh, in terms of fascism, uh, uh, it, there is very clear and there is research done that, in particular, Italian fascist fascism had influence uh, on the on the thinking of people in that organization, including people at the top. But it is also very important to um, keep in mind that they call themselves nationalists and revolutionaries. And despite the fact that in 1939, in 1940, in 1941, it was very beneficial for them to declare themselves to be Ukrainian fascists and establish this bond with, uh, not just with, with Italy, but with uh, uh, Nazi Germany, they refused to do that. And then they refused to recall their independence. So um, uh, influences, yes, but but clearly it's 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 a different it's it's a different type of a political uh, a political project. Uh, 